Hi, this is Paul Saltz from iPhone Dev TV. We're continuing to work on our app right here, and this is an iPhone 5 screen. We can get input here, which we are going to be putting in right here in our code. And then when we press this button, we're doing some date calculations. And so right now, we need to figure out the difference in time between these two dates, and Apple has methods that will allow us to do that type of calculation. So let's go into our code and finish this up. Okay, we're gonna create a new date component here, and this is gonna be a difference in the two dates. So I'm gonna call this, uh, actually I'm gonna call this a duration components, duration date components. And we are going to use the calendar object again. And there's a method here called components. So I'm gonna start typing components what you're seeing is the autocomplete's giving me some suggestions here, and we're gonna use the components method that's gonna take four parameters. It's gonna take the, the calendar unit, which is the type of thing we're looking for, and in this case, that's gonna be a day, and then it's going to take our from date, our to date, and any options that we wanna pass in. So that is this one right here. So I'm gonna just use the arrow keys to move down, press enter, it'll auto complete. Now, here's the part where we're going to pass in a calendar unit. Now, this is a, a special type of thing. So what you're gonna see here is the, the name of the variable is calendar unit. So we're gonna start typing this, and then there's a particular one that we're gonna choose from the options after we type that. So start typing NS calendar unit, and then press period. And these are all the options. So we can do day, era, hour, minute, month, nanosecond, quarter, second, time zone, weekday, and you have a bunch of different things in here. So what we're gonna start with is the calendar unit day, and that is right here. So I'm just gonna click on it, double click it to select it, and we're good to go. Now I like to have my lines of code not really exceeding this mark too much. So I'm gonna press return here and that's going to bring our line of code right here. Now I'm gonna press tab, and what's gonna happen is my cursor is gonna jump from here to over here, so watch what happens. And our from date is going to be our birth date. So I'm just gonna type that here, and now we're gonna have an issue here because this birth date is an optional. We see that down here, it's an optional right here, and if we look at this method, so what I'm gonna show you is a special hotkey, hold the option or the alt key, and you should see that your mouse cursor turns into a question mark. Click on date from components, and it will give you some information. Now, this is the function definition, and what's happening is it's going to return a value. That's what this means. This means the return value is going to be an optional date, which means it may or may not be a date. So. It might be some value that actually exists or it might be nothing. And what we'll need to do is we'll need to force this to be not an optional, but we need to unwrap it. And we use a explanation mark like this to fix that. Okay, so that's better. Now our two date is the, the current date. And if we look at this, we'll do the same thing. I'll hold the the option key, click on this method, you can see a line of code, that's actually objective C code, and this is not an optional. So we don't have to do the same thing for this date, and so I can just pass in the current date. And then for our options, if you're looking at objective C code, you might see people passing in zero, but actually in Swift, that's a compiler error. So what we're gonna need to do here is just pass in nil, that means nothing. So if we do all that, we should be good to go. What I like to do is I, I format these. So right after this one, I'm gonna just do a new line and this is going to format for each of the variables. So we're passing in four variables. We have three here and one up here. And that's gonna create our duration from date components. And now what we can do is we can grab our number of days just by using this date component object. And so if I want the days, I'll create a, a variable called number of days alive, and then I can assign that to our duration date components variable. And here we're gonna ask for the day. So you can see that there's an int here, 
This is the number of days. Now, don't put an S because it's, it's not going to be plural here, even though it is more than one. We're just going to use day here. And then let's actually display this in our app. So I'm going to do what I did at the very beginning, which I said message label.text is equal to something. We're going to change that and do message label.text is equal to, and then I want to print out a number. And what we'll do in here is do a backslash and then number of days alive, just like that. So this is a new way of writing a string. So instead of just doing a, a string without any values, we can actually incorporate our variables, much like we did the print line statement. And so doing this, it's going to insert number of days alive, which is going to be probably over 40,000 days alive. So let's go ahead and run it and see what happens. Oh, and I guess I was a little bit off, so it was 10,000. Now, I'm not formatting this anyway, so and that's something that we can do to make this look a little bit more interesting. So let's go ahead and do that. Instead of doing what we're doing here, we can actually format this string, and we're going to use a class called the number formatter. So we're going to format with commas to make it look a little bit more interesting. And what I'm going to do right here is just say var number formatter is equal to ns number formatter. This is another class that Apple has written that allows you to format for money and for commas and stuff like that. And it can be localized to different regions. Like in France, they use spaces. And in other parts of the world, they use periods. Now, the, the option that we need here, so our number formatter has some options here, and what we'll need to turn on is uses group separator. And if we do that, we just say this is equal to true, and that will turn it on. And then the next step is to actually create a new string. So this is going to be our, our text string. This is going to call the day string. And I'm just going to assign it to the value from the number formatter. I'm going to choose this top one right here, dot string from number. And we go ahead and we just pass in our number here. So that would be number of days alive. If we do that, we now are getting a new string and we can print this one out. So what we're going to do is we're going to print this one here instead of what we originally had. And that should give us some commas. So we'll go ahead and run it again and click the button. And now you can see we have a comma here. So it automatically will do the formatting for you. There's no reason for you to do different types of math and count how many digits and stuff like that to insert the, the commas for you because Apple will do it for you and it will do it correct based on the calendar or the location of your user. So if they're in Europe, it's going to probably look a little bit different than it does in America. All right, so that is it for getting this to work. The last step is we're not grabbing the user input. So right now it's hard coded to my birthday. What I'm going to do here is comment this out. So two forward slashes is a comment. And then we're going to use three of our variables here. So we have the year, the day, and the month text fields. And we can get the integer values out of those using those variables. So I'll just say for the day, this is going to be the day text field dot text, which is going to be the input that the user is providing. And then we have an attribute here called to int, which will turn it into a number. And we'll do the same thing for our other values. So day text field, sorry, this is month text field. If you accidentally miswrite some of these, I'm going to put uh, comments here so that that's not getting in the way dot text dot to int. So if you accidentally write the wrong one, you're going to have a, a bug in your program and it's going to be displaying the wrong information. So here we need our year text field dot text to int. And right now we are set to go. We'll run it. And it looks like we have a issue. And let's take a look at what that issue is. So right now we're 
seeing that we get another optional value here and we have to unwrap it. So because we don't know if this is going to succeed or not, the user might give us a, a letter and a letter won't translate into a number. So we could have some issues with that. So our quick fix right here is to just add the explanation mark at the end of the line. And that's what Xcode is going to recommend. So I'm going to insert it right here and then the last one on the next line. Now we'll hit the run button up top. And we now have the app running. So if we press this, all of a sudden we have an issue. And so we're not doing any validation and it's gonna crash. So let's stop the app and run it again. And let's actually give it a real value. So I'll put in my birthday. Actually, let's do the next day. And so we can just use the keyboard here for that. And I click on how many days old am I? and we get the output. Now, if any one of these is invalid, say something like this, we're gonna crash the app. And so this is one of those things that you need to start thinking about is how do you respond when the user gives you bad input or something like that? And so there's more things to learn to, to make your app more robust so it doesn't crash so that you don't get one stars on the app store. And those are things that we'll be learning in this iPhone course. If you like this video on how to get started with Swift and to create a simple little app that calculates how old you are and formats the text so it looks nice, let me know. You can find me on Twitter at Paul Solt or you can find me via email at paulsolt at iphonedev.tv. And thank you for watching and let me know what you want to learn to build in Swift.